looking at simplifying expressions, equations, and then geometry. So um, that will sort of be the plan for, for next week, just so that you all know and so that you know, you know what's happening. Um, so hopefully we see you next week. And then obviously there are the holiday fun classes that you can join. Alrighty, so let's get into it. So we have discussed three sort of broad topics within the section. We have spoken about Pythagoras, we have spoken about perimeter, and we have spoken about um, area. And so what we're going to do today is essentially revise those three things. So this first example is looking at Pythagoras. So can someone maybe remind me or um, you can put it in the chat, you can raise your hand. What is Pythagoras? Like, what is the theorem? How does it help us? Why is it useful to us? I know someone out there knows Pythagoras. <laughs> See, I told you. Emmanuel, tell me. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. So, um, Pythagoras is whenever the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the other two sides of the triangle, of a oh, right angle triangle. Perfect. And what's very important that we need to do to those two sides before I add them together? Uh, wait, ma'am, can you please repeat? What do we need to do to those two side lengths before we add them together? Ooh. Oh, uh, um, square them, I think. Perfect, exactly. So guys, Pythagoras states to us that the hypotenuse squared, which I'm just going to use h squared, is equal to the sum of the two other sides squared. That is Pythagoras. It means that we can work out the side length of any side in a triangle, whether it's the hypotenuse or not, because this is an equation, so we can manipulate this equation. So I want you guys to try this first one for me so that I can throw my cat out of this room because she's not chewing a plant and she's going to get in trouble. Right, so try the first one for me. Put your answers in the chat. Raise your hand if and when you have an answer. I will be two seconds. Right, I'm seeing some promising answers. Lolita, do you want to explain it to us? Hello, ma'am. Hi. So I said um, x squared equals 30 squared plus 16 squared. Good. Then I said x squared equals 1,156. Then I did the square root of x squared, which gives us x. And then the square root of 1,156 1, equals 34 millimeters. Excellent. Well done. So guys, importantly, I obviously left off the other end there. There's always units to a length. Even if we don't put units there, they are units. So you would just write units. But in this case, it is in millimeters. And so the hypotenuse or the missing length here is 34 millimeters. And just so that we all sort of know where this value came from, this 1,156 came from adding the 30 squared and the 16 squared. So 30 squared is 900, and 16 squared is something, 256. And so when you add those two values together, you get the 1,156. We have to square root because we don't want x squared, we want x. So in order to get rid of that squared, we do the inverse, which is square root. All righty. So I want you to try B now. B is a little bit different because in this question, we know the hypotenuse. I have given you that the hypotenuse is 35 centimeters. 
I'm now looking for another length in the triangle, which means that our um, working out is going to look a little bit different, but I want you to give it a try. And if and when you have an answer, you can pop it in the chat or you can raise your hand to explain it to us that I want the value of X there. Remember your units and your answer. Okay, and I've left A up just in case you want to see sort of what we did again. It's not going to be exactly the same because in this case, we know the hypotenuse. So just be careful. And remember, if you want to explain to us how you got your answer, feel free to raise your hand. Okay, Emmanuel, do you want to explain it to us? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so um, I said 35 squared equals 21 squared plus BC squared. Mm -hmm. and, then I, and then I said BC squared equals 35 squared minus 21 squared. And then I said BC equals um, the, the, the square root of 35 squared minus 21 squared. Mm -hmm. Or you can just like add 35 squared um, plus tw 21 squared and get an answer and then um, square the number. And then mm -hmm. I got 28, I said BC equals 28 centimeters. Perfect. Well done. Right. I've just left out a line there because I want to explain what Emmanuel was doing there. So from the step BC squared equals 35 squared minus 21 squared, what Ma Emmanuel said was, to get BC alone, because I would have to square root both sides, I can just square root 35 squared minus 21 squared. That is absolutely fine. Obviously, if you are more comfortable first working out what each of those values are squared first and then subtracting them, that's fine. So what we would then do, and I've realized I need another line, what we would then do is we could say BC squared is equal to, now 35 squared is 1,225, and 21 squared is 441. So we could subtract those two, and that would then give me an answer that I could then go and square root. So this would give me 784. And then if you wanted to, you could go and square root both of those sides. But if like a manual, you want to sort of, shortcut the process by all means that is absolutely fine another thing i just want to point out is initially we had bc squared on the right and then we put it on the left that's fine as long as you keep the operations correct it doesn't matter so when i say keep the operations correct essentially what emmanuel did was he took the 21 squared over so it became minus and he kept it minus even though he reordered his equation that's okay it doesn't matter. So it is absolutely fine to do that. Just make sure you keep your operations correct. Right. Again, if you want to shortcut the process, by all means, go for it. But you are welcome to show all of your working out if you feel more comfortable with that. Okay, guys, So I'm going to leave that up there in case you want to take a screenshot. But that, in essence, is Pythagoras. We need to be able to work out a hypotenuse, but we also need to be able to work out any of the other sides in our triangle. And um, essentially, you're either going to add them together when working out the hypotenuse or subtract them when working out one of the other two sides. But that's really Pythagoras. So the next topic that we spoke about is perimeter. So we're going to have a look at some examples there. I'm hoping we've all taken a screenshot. 
um, just because I already know that I have made a mistake. I want to just quickly grab something. It's all going swimmingly, as we can see. And we take this out because we've already done that. Right. Ah, oh, the beauty of technology. Okay, so perimeter slash circumference. Who can explain to me what that is? What is perimeter? Okay, Lolita, tell us. Perimeter is the outside length of a shape. Perfect. So the perimeter is the total outside length of a shape. And so when working our perimeter, we need to know what those lengths are. It can be the distance around the shape, the length around the shape, but essentially it's the outside of the shape. So if we look at this um, shape that we have here, we can see that we've got a semicircle. So we've got half a circle, which is the curve. But we also have, in terms of perimeter, the straight line down at the bottom. Okay, so those are the two lengths that we need in order to work out this uh, shape's perimeter. So the first thing I want to point out is the fact that this is half a circle. Okay, now whenever we work out the circumference of a circle, the circumference is found by saying 2 times pi times r, where r is the radius. And your radius is always measured from the center of your circle to the edge of your circle. So in this case, this 3 comma 5 is our radius. Now, obviously, if we want the circumference of a circle, so a full circle, that is the formula we will use for a full circle. But I don't want a full circle. I want half a circle. So that would mean I would have to divide that answer by 2. We also need to bear in mind that we have this bottom length. We've got this straight line length that we also need to include in our perimeter. And so if two radii make up this total length, this would mean that this total length at the bottom is 3 comma 5 plus 3 comma 5, which we know is 7 centimeters. And so I've got the straight line length, but I still need the curved edge length. So I'm going to give you mm, two minutes to try and get the total perimeter of the shape for me. So this curved surface as well as the straight line surface length, sorry, I don't know why I said surface, the curved length and the straight line length, what is the total perimeter of the shape? I've given you some helpful hints. So have a think and let's see. Remember guys, obviously if you've been told at school to use pi as 3 comma 1 4 or 3 comma 1 4 2 or whatever you've been told to use it as, that's fine. Otherwise, um, use the pi button on your calculator. If you want to put up your hand to give us an answer, please do. Otherwise, you can just pop it in the chat. I mean, I'm not too sure what you mean with the, the method. I'll repeat what I said. Because we want half a circle, we would use the circumference formula, which is 2 times pi times r. But then we have to divide it by 2, because I only want half of the circle's circumference. But then we still have to add the straight line at the bottom. So as long as you get the half, half curved surface plus the straight line length at the bottom, you will get the total perimeter for the shape. Okay, Becky, do you want to explain to us? I'm not really sure if I did it right. Okay, um, let's try. Um, I got 17 
Um, that sounds good. Let's let's go through it. Um, so what I did was I said two times pi times the radius. And I divided that by two and I added seven because you wanted the whole chart. Perfect. Exactly. So guys, I'm just going to do it step by step here. We've got two times pi times the radius, which Becky, what is our radius? Um, three comma five. Three comma five. So when I go and work that out, I get 21 comma nine, nine, one, one, four, eight, five, eight. So there's a whole long decimal. And remember what that answer is, is the full circumference. I don't want the full circumference. So that's why Becky said, we need to still divide this by two because I just want half of that circumference. So when I divide that by two, I get 10 comma nine, nine, five, five, seven, four, two. There's a whole long decimal again, centimeters. So now that value that I've got there is this curved length. Then as Becky said, we still need to go and add the seven centimeters, which is the straight line length at the bottom. So I still now need to take this 10 comma and then the whole long decimal plus the seven centimeter straight line at the bottom, giving me 17 comma nine, nine, five, five, blah, 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 whole long decimal. Now, when we round this off, obviously it depends what we're rounding off to. But if let's say, for example, I asked you to round off to two decimal places, this five is going to increase the nine to a 10, which essentially means it becomes a zero, which increases this nine to a 10, which bumps the 17 up to an eight, and an 18 rather. And so what that means is that rounding this off to two decimal places actually gives me 18 comma zero zero centimeters as my perimeter. Very nicely done, Becky, well done. Okay, so for those of you that were feeling a bit confused, I hope now that we've gone through it, it makes a bit more sense. Obviously, if it doesn't, just raise your hand and ask a question or let me know where it is you're confused. But at the sort of, if we go sort of through the step by step again, I worked out that the circumference of my circle, the full circle, but then I divided it by two because I only wanted half the curve. And once I'd done that, all I needed to do was add the straight line at the bottom. And so we were able to then get our parameter through that. I'm leaving it up in case anyone wants to take a screenshot. Right, and this is sort of a trickier circumference question because of the fact that we're working with just half a circle. And we then have to remember that we also have that straight line because we've cut the circle in half. So now we've created this um, straight length that we need to consider. Okay, hoping we've all got our screenshots. Last three seconds. Right. So once again, I'm asking you for the perimeter of the shape. What we need to remember is that perimeter, as we've been told, is the outside length of a shape. So the perimeter of the shape is going to be the addition of all of these lengths that I'm sort of outlining in orange here. And that's just gone really badly. So let me try that again. So all of these lengths in orange form the perimeter of the shape. Now we haven't necessarily, or I haven't necessarily written down all of those lengths, but all the information here is enough for you to work out what this bottom length is and what the side length is. I just want to clarify that this 3,8 centimeters is basically from the end of the L to sort of the 90 degree corner. So that whole like foot of the L is 3,8 centimeters, just in case that wasn't clear. So I'm going to get you to try that by yourself. I have given you enough information to work out the height of the L and the width of the L. So look carefully at the measurements I have given you 
figure out what those are. And then all you need to do is add the numbers together because we're doing perimeter. I see my pebs, you guys can do this, let's go. We can do this. I see Sanelisa thinking really hard and Paula says like, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna give everyone another minute. Again, my hint, think about what the total height of the L is and what the total width of the L is and then add all of those lengths together. Because if you just add the 3,5, the 7,3, the 3,8 and the one, you're not doing the full perimeter. You're still then missing whatever that width is and whatever that length is. So we need to still work out what those are. Looks like a toddler drawing this, but it's fine. Although, to be fair, a toddler could probably do better. Nice, guys. Seeing some good answers there. There too, Sammy. Well done. Okay, I see Becky's the only one with a hand up. So, Becky, would you like to explain to us again? So, ma'am, what I did was I, to get the base length, mm -hmm. I said 3,5 centimeters plus 3,8 centimeters. Perfect. And that gave you? It gave me 7,3. Perfect. And then after I got that, I said to get the height, I said 3,5 plus 1. Why 3,5? No, sorry, sorry. Um, 7,3 plus 1. Good, good. 7,3 plus 1 which gives you 8,3, perfect. And then I added the one centimeter, 3,8, 7,3 and 3,5 together with those two. And then I got 23,9. One centimeter, 3,8, 7,3, 3,5. Just double check, double check your addition there. I got something different, so let's just double check. Oops. I'm also double checking myself. You still get the same answer? No. What do we get? And I got 31.2. Perfect. Well done. So 31, comma 2 centimeters. Well done. Okay, so guys, when working with these sorts of perimeter questions, sometimes we might not give you links, but we will always give you enough information to go and work it out. And so because we could see that we could take the 3,8 and the 3,5 and essentially combine them to form this bottom length, we could do that. Because I could also then see that I could take so many colors going on here, the 7,3 
and the one centimeter and combine it to form the height of the L, I nearly said triangle, we could do that. And so by working out those missing lengths, I'm then able to get what my perimeter is. Okay, I'm just going to take that beautiful artistic expression off. If you would like to take a screenshot, there it is. And then I think we can do a brain break before we continue onwards. Our brain break's a little bit different today. You'll see in a second. I'm assuming we've all got a screenshot. So our brain break today is guess the phrase. So these are like common phrases that have been put into pictures. These are called dingbats. We have done some of them before. It's just been a little while since we did do it. So Yolanda suggested we give it a try again, which is a very good suggestion. So if you have or know um, any of these phrases, let us know. You can put it in the chat or you can raise your hand. Zalama, do you have one for us? E Hello, ma'am. Hi. Is, I have to one for number three. I think I'm okay. correct. Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, number three, I'm guessing it's magnetic field. Absolutely. Yes. Well done. Well done. And the Honsa has also. Nice. Nana, I have a number two. I think it's day. Why day? D A. What? Where's the why? So that, was a, that, that was a nice guess. You can explain. Ma'am, mm. as in like the A has its own Y when you just say the sound A. Oh, I'm with you. Okay. So A, as you said, kind of already has the A. Right. Okay. I would, I would probably take that. There was actually another one for it, but yeah, that makes sense. D A. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Um, Matthew? Hello, ma'am. Yeah? Uh, ma'am, I have one for number one. Okay. Ma'am, I think it's breakfast in bed. Wonderful. Yes, it's thank you. Well done. <laughs> Very nice. Let's go, my babes. You are left with two and four. Remember that two could be something else that you can think of. And mostly it's like science thing. Emmanuel, are you there to help us? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. I'm bad at when, when it comes to these type of challenges, ma'am, but I'm gonna try. Me too. Ma'am, so for uh yeah. the Q, I'm gonna say it stands for quick, ma'am. Like going quick on the, you know. Um mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, okay, I mean, that's, that's right. Okay, is it fine if I help Emmanuel to yeah. step? Yeah. Emmanuel, let's let's think about what uh, what's happening on the pizza. What is the boy doing on the pizza? Uh he's sitting on <laughs> the letter. Are you sure he's sitting? Look, look carefully. Oh, what? what is he doing? He's uh, jumping. Is he jumping? Okay. Yeah. So, what is the phrase that uh, we normally use with the Q? Long jump. Oh no! And, um, no, no, no. The phrase that we we normally use. If you find people, you do what? And jumping you, you, the... you jumping there. Uh, Q. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jumping you the jump in the Q. Right oh, now. the Q. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's jumping I see. The Q. <laughs> well done. Uh, jumping the queue. Well done, Emmanuel. You will finally get them. Don't worry. Slowly. <laughs> I'm shocking at these as well. I have to have the answers beforehand, otherwise it doesn't work. <laughs> Dalama wants to try the, the second one, the last second one. Hey, Amen. I don't yeah. know, man. but what came to my mind? I got a democratic alliance. <laughs> 
<laughs> I saw that on the chat as well. Um, I mean, I suppose in a South African context, we could definitely say democratic alliance, but if we sort of were in the, I don't know, greater world, maybe not, but I suppose within South Africa, yeah. The DA. It also helps Nzalama. Nzalama, what do you see on the picture? What do you see? Um, I see a D and A. Well, there we go. That's the answer. DNA is the answer. Oh, the oh, exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh. With these okay. things, you don't have to think a lot. <laughs> you just describe what you see. <laughs> well done, guys. Well done. So the answer was DNA. Well that done. That moments of like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With this thing is always like that, but I was impressed with the magnetic field. Well done, my people. Yeah. And jumping the queue and breakfast in bed. Well done, guys. That's impressive. Well done. That was a nice break. Well done, everyone. You are better at this than I am. Okay. Right. Let us continue on with our measurements. So, oops, sorry, got a bit excited there. Okay, let's let me ask this question. We're we're you know in the middle of exams. We're we're at this point in life. Who feels like having a bit of a challenge question? You can put a thumbs up, thumbs down in the chat. I will not be offended if you put a thumbs down. This is a challenge question, and so if we're not feeling it, I'm gonna move on. But if we're feeling it, let's do it. Yes, guys. You know, make my heart happy. Lovely. Nice. Yes. Nice. Majority is like we are up for it. Justin. It just, just wants like to be. <laughs> okay, so majority rules. We're going to try the challenge question. However, if you are not feeling the challenge question, that is perfectly fine. I get it. I'm going to put up the next one as well so if you're not feeling the challenge one give the next one a try if you are challenge question is let's just move this down determine the perimeter of the shape below which we'll chat about in a second versus if you're not feeling the challenge one determine the area of the shape below. So if you don't want to do the challenge one, I'm not going to force you. It is a challenge one. All I want you to do is find the area of the shape, but I'm not going to help you at all. Versus if you do want to do the challenge one, I'm going to do a little bit of help here. In that, if we are looking for the perimeter, all I want oh God, is these outside lengths over here now we've done an example like this where we want half a curved edge so so think back to what we did and then give it a try remember of course that a line drawn from one end of a circle through the center to another is the diameter and so half of that is your radius that's all the help i'm going to give you so either you're doing the challenge or you're working out the area of the triangle. I'm not helping with the triangle because we should all know that. But give it a go. Right, remember, obviously, if you're doing perimeter, it is just in units versus if you are doing the area, area is unit squared. And just as a reminder, so maybe I'm being a bit mean, the circumference of a full circle, circumference, of full circle or a whole circle that formula is two times pi times r for a let me just double check myself before i start lying to you c 
60 is 60s is too high. We need to go lower for the perimeter. That's all I'm going to say, Theo. I'm going to pick on Theo just now to hopefully explain it for us. I'm going to give everyone a second or two. If you've given up on the challenge, remember you've got an area question to work out. Again, remember area is units squared, whereas circumference is just units. Like I say, 60 is too high for question C. For the perimeter, it needs to go lower. Lisa, do you want to try for us? I'm, I'm, I was going to do A. Okay, the area question. Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, keep your hand up. I'll come to you now. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Theo, help us with C. <coughs> Hello, ma'am. Hello. Um, so, ma'am, I said... um. Two times five times um three, then I got um mm -hmm. six. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Then I got um eighteen comma eighty four. Then um I divided it by two. Good. Then I got nine comma forty two. Then um I saw um it was like four off shapes. Then I times it by four. Perfect. I'm keeping up. I'm sorry. I'm being very slow. Right. So then, then you got, got nine. Um, yeah, keep going. And I times it by four, ma'am, because there's like mm -hmm. um, four off shapes, mm -hmm. four, off, four off circles. And I got um, 37,68. Perfect. So your decimals are a bit different to mine just because um, of rounding, but comma six, eight is perfect. What are the units? Okay. You. Are you still there? Centimeters, ma'am. Perfect. <laughs> right. So, guys, excellent. Well done if you got this. Just to quickly show you. So, this first step that Theo did in terms of this two times pi times three, that was working out the circumference of a full circle. The division by two over here was then working out the half circle. And because we can see that there are four half circles, he times by four. And so that is how we could work out the perimeter of that whole shape. It was a tricky one. Like I say, I disclosed that, that fact right at the start. But well done if you gave it a try. Obviously, I'll leave it up there if you want to take a screenshot. But, but Palesa is going to explain question A for us now. Um, Ma'am, I said A is equal to a half open brackets B times height, and then I replaced, um, I said A equals half open bracket 12 times 10 closed bracket, and then ma'am, I got 60 centimeters squared. Perfect. Well done. Whoops. Awesome. So exactly, guys, area of a triangle is half base times height. Remember your base, or let me start with your height. Your height length is always measured from the top point of your triangle down to the base at a right angle. So that would be your height. Your base is then that side that it is at a right angle too. And if we know those, we substitute them in. Um, Samuel, I see that on the chat, you've got a different formula and you're getting some weird answers. Um, could you maybe either message Yulanda or myself, or you can put it on the chat what the formula is that you're using so that we can maybe see what's going wrong. It might be a calculator setting as well, especially if you're using pi. Um, so let's just see if we can figure that out. Ah, okay, never mind. We're all sorted. <laughs> okay, so guys, very nicely done. If you wanna take your screenshots, please do.
And then we're going to have a look at some more area questions. Okay, hope we all have our screenshots. Let's have a look. So this, I don't even, uh, my screen, my, okay, sorry, technology. What, I couldn't, sorry guys. My chat's just phoning by itself, it's weird. Okay, so, <laughs> um, question two is determine the area of the shaded region. So just so that we're all clear on what the shaded region is, it's still doing it and it's weird, it's freaking me out is, oh my gosh, it's still doing it. I'm panicking. Shaded region is the gray bit. Okay, so that is what we want. Can someone let me know what shapes are we working with here? You can just pop it in the chat. Hopefully my chat decides to not scroll by itself. Um, what shapes are we working with in this image? rectangles wonderful now if we are working with the area of a rectangle what is the formula for area of a rectangle again just put it in the chat there what is the formula very nice very nice length times breadth okay so now if you want to raise your hand or you can try type it out in the chat Based on the fact that we know we're working with rectangles and based on the fact that I am just looking for the gray bits or the gray area, can someone just talk about what method or what we would need to do in order to get this? You don't have to give me an answer. I just want you to explain how you would try and do it. So Ria Betsue, do you want to try? <clears throat> Hi, ma'am. Hi. So ma'am, what I did was that I, I said, um, be, because the formula of um, finding the area of rectangle is length times breadth, I said um, eight, eight centimeters multiplied by six centimeters. Okay. And what does that give you? Ma'am, it gave me 48 centimeters squared. Perfect. And that would then be the area of this smaller rectangle. Oh, okay. Ma'am, can I give you for, okay. for the shaded area? So, ma'am, okay. for the shaded area, you're going to say 14 centimeters multiplied by 8 meters. Centimeters, Perfect. sorry. Perfect. Which will give you 112 centimeters squared. Good, and then how am I gonna get the shaded area? Ma'am, you're going to subtract them. Excellent, so I need to say what's minus what? What numbers do I subtract? Ma'am, you're going to say 112 minus 48. Excellent, well done, and what does that give me? Ma'am, it gives you 64. Awesome, Rebetsuo. Well done. Thank you, ma'am. Very nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, guys, when we are working with shaded areas, most of the time you're going to have to work out the areas of the shapes and then subtract what isn't part of the shading. And so, in this case, we worked out the area of the big rectangle minus the area of the small rectangle because the small rectangle's area was not included. So we wanted to subtract that middle bit so that we just had the shaded area around it. And so you know how to work out areas. It's just then the extra step of, of subtracting what needs to be subtracted. Right, I'll leave that up there if you want to take a screenshot. I see Palesa has a hand up. Palesa? Ma'am, where did you get the minus 48 centimeters squared from so the 48 centimeters squared came from working out the area of the small rectangle mm. 
EFGH, this one in the oh. middle. Oh, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Perfect. Um, I've, as Palace has actually asked that question, obviously, guys, you could have a step before this where you either worked out the two areas individually, or you could say it would be 14 times 8 minus the 6 times 8 in order to get those two values. So I just did my working out on the diagram, but you would work out the area of the two rectangles and then subtract. Okay, I'm just waiting for everyone to take a screenshot if they still need to. And then I think I've got one more question, but it's a three-parter. Let's see how far we get. Okay, I'm assuming we all have screenshots. Let's have a look at this last one here. So I'm just going to make that a bad smaller. We have been given this diagram and we've got a circular pool in a garden. So the garden is obviously the rectangle. Right, that's the garden. And the pool is obviously the circle. Clearly I can draw very well. For the garden, I have told you how long the garden is and I've told you how wide the garden is. And for the pool, I've given you the diameter of the pool. So remember this seven meters is the diameter, which means that if we want the radius, we would need to halve it. So we need to divide it by two. So the radius is 3,5 meters. Right, so there are three questions here for you. Firstly, calculate the area of the pool. Secondly, find the perimeter of the pool. And thirdly, calculate the area of the garden around the pool. So this is sort of like a shaded um, area question. I only care about all of this area around the pool. I don't care about the area of the pool. So we have got 10 minutes left of this lesson. I don't know if you need all 10 minutes. So I'm going to give you, let's say five, see where you're at. You can put your answers in the chat with one, two, and three. Obviously, if you want to raise your hand to give us an answer, you can. Read the questions carefully. First one is area of the pool. So make sure your units are correct. Second one is perimeter of the pool. So again, make sure your, your units are correct. And third one, it is the area of the garden around the pool. So it's like a shaded area question. If you're putting answers in the chat, just remember to number them one, two, and three. Um, I also realized that we have not done area of a circle just yet. And so just to remind you, oh no. Obviously, if you know your formulas, that's absolutely fine. You can keep going. If we have a circle, circumference, The perimeter is 2 times pi times r. Area is pi times r squared. So those are the two useful formulas for your circle. Um, I'm going to say round off to two decimal places just because generally that's what we round off to. And obviously, again, guys, remember, if you've been told to use pi as something specific, so either 3,14 or 3,142, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to give everyone another minute or two and then we'll have a look you guys have done so well tonight I'm so proud of you
we are getting a mixed bag of answers. I'm glad we're all trying though. And this is what maths is all about. You have to try. Get some right, get some wrong. That's how we learn. Okay. Lolita, do you want to start with the first one? Um, yes, ma'am. Okay, cool. So you tell us how do we work out the area of the pool? So I said A. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I said A equals two times pi times R. Okay, so I said... just, just remember area is pi R squared. Oh. So I do you think... want to try again? Um, yes, please, ma'am. Yeah. So I said A equals um, pi mm -hmm. R squared. Okay. And so then I said, I said pi times three comma five squared. Excellent. Then I got 38 comma 48 meters squared. Perfect. Well done. So 38 comma four eight meters squared fantastic Lolita well done thank you ma'am okay so guys that is the area of our pool sorted um Emmanuel do you want to do question two for us oh uh, yes ma'am okay so um so I um I said p equals 20 plus 20 since um a rectangle has two equal Wait, what? Yeah, a rectangle has um two pairs of equal sides. So I mm -hmm. said 20 plus 20 plus 10 plus 10. And that gave me 60 mil um, millimeters or meters. Okay, meters so just, sorry. just be careful. It said the perimeter of the pool, not the garden. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, I said, sorry, I mixed <laughs> my okay. calculations up. I said C equals two times pi times three comma five, uh, which gave me twenty one comma ninety nine or um twenty two, twenty two uh meters squared. Perfect, just meters. Oh, because just meters. Okay. Oh, I don't know what's happening. I'm sorry. Okay, so exactly twenty one comma nine nine meters. You could round up to 22. I'm going to leave it as two decimal places, but exactly as Emmanuel said, we substitute it into the circumference, or we can say perimeter, but circumference is actually better. So C equals two times pi times R, and we get our circumference. Okay, Palesa, do you want to do number three for us? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I said um, length times width. So, ma'am, I said 10 meters times 20 which gave me 200 meters squared. Perfect. And what is that the area of? Ma'am, it's the area for the garden. Excellent. So now how do I get the area around the pool? Ma'am, I say pi times 3,5 squared. Okay. Which gives me 38.48. Oh my golly. Yeah, perfect. And so what do I do with those two answers now? Ma'am, do we add them? I just want the area around the pool. So I don't want to include the pool. So ma'am, we subtract. Good. So 200 minus 38 comma Four eight, which gives us is one six one point seventy two. I feel like I can't use a calculator here, which is worrying. Two hundred minus thirty eight comma four eight. 
Right, and that would be meters, meters squared. squared. Excellent, Palessa, well done. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, guys, so that is how we answer those three questions. That was very nicely done by all of you. Well done, and I saw lots of answers come in in the chat.